What's up guys, Max Maxworks here, and today we're going to be fixing this. This is a 2003 R1 um, that I picked up for very cheap, and the reason I picked it up for very cheap is because it does not charge. Uh, if you throw a fresh battery into this thing, uh, you'll measure about 12 volts across the battery, and she will run and drive really, really well for, for a little while. Uh, but as soon as the battery is dead, can't drive the fuel pump, can't ignite the spark plugs, whole bike dies. This is a very common problem. Um, I see it more on Yamahas than I think I see it on any other bike. Uh, I have really no idea why that is, but uh, for about $50, you can replace the stator, which is bad on this bike for sure, and the regular rectifier, which may be bad or may go bad, but is easier to get to when you got everything torn apart anyway. So we're gonna spend 50 bucks, we're gonna put a new stator, a new gasket, and a new regular rectifier into this bike. Uh, and hopefully we can be rewarded by seeing uh, about 13 and a half volts across the battery while she's running. And the cool thing is, is that on this bike, it's actually really clean. All it really needs is this little fix. And then after that, uh, we should be ready to clean it up and throw it up on Craigslist. And maybe even put a few miles on it going down the road. So there's nothing really to do but to get to it. Uh, the biggest problem, biggest part of this job really, is trying to get all the plastics off uh, safely and cleanly and making sure we get all the bolts to go back where they need to go. Um, this bike has aftermarket uh, billet uh, engine covers. I don't know if that's gonna be a problem or not, but uh, we have all the stock parts, so I'm gonna get this thing apart and put it back together and, uh, and hopefully be rewarded by a, by a smooth running uh, leader bike. Now, it's not absolutely necessary, but since it's a new bike and I've never had my hands on it, we're going to go ahead and do an oil change while we're in here. If you remove this cover, uh, you can try to lean the bike over to the other side and get away with it um, without having to lose too much oil, but honestly, in my opinion, it's always better to just uh, just get it changed while you're in here. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. our oil filter and we're going to go ahead and remove it as well. Now we're going to install our brand new uh, Canon 303 oil filter. unplug this from the rectifier which is right up here where my finger is um, and so now what we're going to do is we're actually just going to pull this uh, plug out this wire just goes to this little uh, little clamp right here which we can take off it's just got a little twist tie type thing on it and we can set that aside now the next step of the process is we've got to remove this cover and to remove this cover uh, you're going to need a t or uh, a five millimeter um, hex bit and just a socket driver. Now we're going to see, because I don't know on this bike if these bolts are all universal or if they're uh, different lengths. On some bikes they can be very different so you need to make sure that you set them down uh, in a pattern that matches the um, the order in which they came out. But what I like to do is I like to break them all loose first with the wrench and then take them out just by hand. So in this case, all the bolts except for the lowest one, uh, the one that was down here, appear to all be the same. Now you want to keep your drip pan because there's probably going to be still some oil left in this thing.
you can see there's oil still dripping out of the uh, out of the pan. You want to give it a few whacks, and then very gently, we're going to use a screwdriver to kind of help us pry it off. Um, but you don't want to be actually prying against anything. So this is an interesting design. Um, the cover came off, but there's the um, this is the uh, the uh, rotor. It actually sits on top of the stator, uh, which I've never really seen something like this before. But it's not really a big deal. We just need to take this off. Now, one of the benefits of buying a lot of bikes and fixing a lot of bikes is you end up with a lot of random specialty tools like this guy right here. This is actually not the correct thread, but it is a uh, Yamaha style um, uh, flywheel or stator pu or uh, flywheel or rotor puller, depending on how you want to call it. Basically, the outside one threads into the rotor itself, and then you thread this inside piece all the way down, and it pushes, pushes, pulls it out. And now we should be able to just remove this. Now the reason I'm kind of struggling with this is because it's slick and I'm fighting against the magnets. So what we're probably going to need is something to... So now you can see there's our stator and you can tell these coils over here completely burnt up because they're a darker color. So now all we really got to do is uh, remove last few bolts this one holds the uh, wiring loom in place there's a little bracket on it don't lose that and then the actual bolts that hold the rotor in are Torx or T30 bits So let me drop a little knowledge on you kids. Now, now that we're looking at them, you know, on the workbench, you can tell that this one right here is just all burnt up. Like this is all toast, and I ripped it apart, unfortunately, uh, when I was removing it. But I can show you guys on this new one. So if you don't want to pull your whole bike apart, the way you test it is you find this plug, and you can see there's three sets of windings. And what you want to do is you want to measure con uh, measure impedance between these windings, and you want to see. Uh, it depends on the manufacturer spec, but you generally want to spe see less than half an ohm um, between any of the three windings. And in this case, all three of them read about 0.4 ohms, which is perfect. Because when you remove the impedance of the actual leads, um, I don't know why it's freaking out. Okay, there are 0.2. So really we're seeing about 0.2 ohms of impedance on each of these uh, windings which is exactly what the manual says we're supposed to see. Now, like I said, unfortunately I toasted these, um, but before I took uh, the, all this out of the bike, I was reading something like 1.2, 1.5, 1.9 ohms between the impedances, which means it's totally gone. So that's how you check. At this point, there's nothing really left to do other than put everything back together. At this point, there's nothing really left to do than reassemble everything. You guys saw me take it apart, so I'm not going to film this part. The only thing I will say is you want to use this guy. This is thread locker blue. Every bolt that goes back inside of an engine should always have some thread locker on it, in my opinion, just in case. Now, other piece of jankiness. I did some Googling, and it looks like this bolt right here uh, that held the flywheel on is actually stretched to fit. So theoretically, you shouldn't reuse this. Um, Here's my take on that. If it was a head gasket bolt, I would say, yeah, the project would sit until I could go get another one. The honest truth is we're just going to over torque it a little bit more, stretch it a little bit more, and it'll be fine for our purposes. Um, but in general, if you're going to do this job, uh, you need to know that you should really order that bolt ahead of time uh, or go to your Yamaha dealer and grab one. I'm sure they're just a few dollars. Fortunately, today's a Sunday and everything's closed. So... We're going to be fine. Uh, the other thing is this washer right here that sits on the bolt can get damaged over time. Um, you don't have to replace it if it's not damaged. Like mine is nice and clean. But if yours is grooved or damaged, 
you really should replace it. It's also probably a couple of bucks. Not a big deal. Everything's back together. She's full of oil. So moment of truth. Right now our cold battery is showing about 12.13 volts, which is kind of what you'd expect. And if we did everything right when this thing fires up, we should get close to 14 volts across the battery while the bike is running. one of the upsides to buying goofy bikes from the hood. This has got to be by far one of my favorite features. You've got what I like to call Night Rider and the uh, I'm with the police. Now all of that is controlled from a tiny little switch up here on the dash and so like or the, uh, the brakes and everything still work exactly like you think they would. And it's got these pretty cool turn signals, which I actually have to admit I kind of like. Um, but even if you're in one of the modes, you can still uh, use the brakes and stuff like that. So I just I thought that was really goofy, and I thought I'd show you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, my name is Max. This is MacWorks. If you like the com if you like the video, please subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. There's new videos every Friday at 9 a.m., so make sure you subscribe, check out the channel, see the cool stuff we're doing every week. Uh, and that's all I got for you guys. As always, peace.